Hello, my name is John Herrick. I'm a professional engineer, and one of the iconic bridges that I've been involved in building is the Sunshine Skyway Bridge here in Tampa Bay area. I'm one of the founders of the USF Balsa Wood Bridge Competition, and we'd really like to have you come out and build a bridge so I can break it. Now we're going to take a look at weights and how weights are related to tension and compression in your members of your bridge. And to help me, I have the chairman of our USF Balsa Wood Bridge Competition and our future chairman. And the first one is if you guys will move close together and the two of you hold this weight up high and it's not too hard to hold that weight and these young ladies could probably hold it there for 10-15 minutes. But that now, if you guys would move further and further apart, then what this demonstrates as the tendons in your arm are in tension and that is painful after a while. The bones are in compression and that's what's holding up this weight. When you're building a bridge, you do not just have vertical members, you have members that are at an angle. When we have a bridge with a angle member, then we determine how many degrees from vertical the member is, and then try to break down how much weight in each direction that member can handle. This first slide shows a member at 30 degrees from the horizontal. If you put a weight of 50 pounds on the tip of that member, the member itself will show a stress of 100 pounds and have a horizontal force that is 87 pounds. That 87 pound horizontal force has to be taken into account in addition to the vertical. When we put two members side by side, you can hold 100 pounds and the horizontal force is 174 pounds, which is quite a bit. The, each of the bridge members have to hold 100 pounds as well. A, the horizontal member needs to be a very large and strong member to resist the forces. Slide three shows a, a little bit different or, orientation if you change the uh, members to 70 degrees from the horizontal, the 100 pounds that you're holding uh, only needs a member that holds 53 pounds on either side, and the horizontal force at the bottom is 37 pounds. When you pull the legs together, you reduce the stress in the horizontal member, and you don't need such a large member. Our next demonstration with weights and working with vectors. Here to help us demonstrate with more with weights is Len Becker from HNTB. He's helping us make believe with the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. And we're going to, the two of us, hold up a, the bridge nice and high. And it's not too hard to hold it up now that we're so close together. The, ladies at the ends are the anchors. They have to pull to make sure that the uh, line is taut and that way the bridge stays up. Then we're, as we move further and further apart to allow boats go underneath and raise the bridge, uh, it gets tougher and tougher to hold this up. I'm in compression pretty hard and the ladies pull and that's in tension. On a very small member, if you're working in compression and the uh, material would bend fairly easily, what you do is you put a, uh, a support in the middle. Now go ahead and try to bend it. It's a whole lot tougher to bend, so when you're working with a long member in compression, you can get away with a smaller member if you brace it more often. 
Our next demonstration will be on the uh, flexibility of uh, members. When you're designing your bridge and you have a member that's in compression, you need to make sure that there's enough mass there so that when you press down on it, you, your member doesn't bend or break. And as we start at the end, with a very small member, when you lean on it, it bends very easily. The next one also bends, not so much, and then can bend it, but it takes a lot of effort. And then you get the mind, forget it. I'm not going to be able to bend it at all. So you just need to make sure that you have the mass that you need for a compression member. So now we're getting into the design portion. But before we design, you have to know what you're designing. So on our website, we have some information that can help you with your design. But you can also go to YouTube and Google is your friend. Uh, so you can go there and find out some information that could be very helpful. Or you can even come to colleges or schools that can help. They can be like, hey, we can help you with that. That would be great. But after you, do it, after you get all your information, you're going to want to put it onto paper. So on paper, you're going to have to do three things, have a side view, top view, and an end view. Uh, so I'm going to do an example. It's going to be a simple truss. I'm going to have some members. So this is what it might look like. And then you're going to have a top view. Top view is looking down from the top. So on this bridge, it will sort of look like And then to the left, the right sorry, of the side view, you're going to do the end view, which is you looking from either ends of your bridge. So my end view would probably look like this. Now that we have our plan on paper, we're going to move it to an electronic format using a software named West Point Bridge Designer. After you've inserted your design into the software, you can remove joints, you can insert joints, you can insert members, and you can also remove the members and resize them. You can also simulate the point load that will be acting on your bridge during the competition. You can make it look whatever you want to be. You can be creative. You can make it even make it look like your school's mascot. Go wild. You're going to need to test it, and the software has something for that. You may not always get it once, but as you keep testing and testing, you'll get it. Hey guys, now that we have finished talking about software, let's talk about estimating final weight of a bridge. I will give you two tips on how to estimate the final weight of a bridge. But first, please go check out our Rules and Guidelines tab for more information. First, remember balsa wood is like people, they weigh differently. Next, remember to account for your glue. It's about 15% of the balsa wood's weight. After you have accounted for glue and wood, remember less than 110 grams needs to be the final weight. Get creative and design smart. Now that we've finished the design, it's time to build it. You're gonna need your set of ingredients to build your masterpiece. First, you're gonna need some balsa wood. Then you need some tape. Then you're gonna need glue. You can use super glue like Zappa Gap or regular glue like Elmer's. But remember, don't glue your hands together. But if you do, have some nail polish remover close by so you can remove it. You also need some sandpaper to help refine your cuts and make a more accurate angle. You're also going to need a straight edge so you can cut straight. And some wax paper to lay on top of your plan set when you are building your bridge. 
You're also going to need an X-Acto knife, but keep in mind that the X-Acto knife is sharp and can cut you. So when you are cutting, cut away from yourself. You also need some pins. The pins are used to help secure the balsa wood together when you are gluing. You lay them on either side. And don't forget the mat so you can put these pins in. Lastly, you need a plan set so you can build your bridge on top of it. Remember, it goes mat, plan set, and wax paper. Build on top of it with your balsa wood. Look, a bridge. Not too bad if I don't say so myself. Under nine, we made it. You got a bridge for me. And it fits. And I put a school bus on. <laughs> 